Um, I guess I will do, I will give, I don't know, a few more minutes, uh, like two more minutes and then I will start. Um, do you have any questions of the previous tutorials that you might want me to answer? Um, is it is it easy to mm -hmm. okay this might not really be related to the the uh, how do you call it? Mm -hmm. the tutorials but just my own if i if i plot the uh, if i plot points if mm -hmm. i plot for instance if i plot the uh, if i plot maybe float positions mm -hmm. in in the ocean mm -hmm. and there are points okay so maybe i color the points by maybe temperature mm. so the 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 data is now more it's 1d it's a one-dimensional array or something can i change it to 2d so that i can use something like mesh grid to spread it around uh yeah uh definitely you can i actually didn't include that in this tutorial um but I could provide something like that. You, you can, with pandas actually, um, you can move from having a table um, into um, a map. Um, so you can, I guess it depends exactly what you wanna do, but you can grid data um, and basically and interpolate between points. Um, you can also use grid data to um, interpolate, but I guess it depends on the density of the points that you might have. Um, so yeah, I guess there, there's a few options. Um, you can either use, um, I'm guessing you, you're seeing this. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, so you can probably use um, this grid data, this SciPy interpolate grid data, um, uh, or you can also, uh, this is a bit of, um, um, it, I mean, this is a bit more tricky just doing it with pandas, but it's usually, um, yeah, I, I guess it depends exactly what you want to do, but you can do group buys uh, of the data on different axes, and then you can then map it into, convert it into a 2D, um, to the field, um, I guess I, I can I can provide an example of that later on if that's of your interest. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll leave that so I keep that in mind. Um, okay. I guess we'll have probably like everyone here. Um, so, well, I guess I will introduce myself. So I'm Josué, and I'm in Canberra, but I'm originally from Mexico. Um, and today, I guess I will be talking a bit about Cartopide and Geopandas. So these two libraries are really useful to, um, to plot uh, data into, in maps. Um, and particularly, well, Cartopi is, um, it's a library that basically allows you to use pretty much any of the projections. There's are some limitations with some of the projections, but uh, pretty much any projection that you can think of, like the most common ones, you can find it in Cartopi. Um, and GeoPandas, it's, um, it's another uh, package that, um, that allows you to basically migrate um, like CSV files into plots uh, on map plots, um, or also imp import uh, shape files or GeoJSON files, which is an open source um, format uh, to, to, to create maps and to, um, to share um, data. Um, so I guess uh, there's a few things that I will, I mean, there's a few goals into this uh, tutorial. Um, and one of them is that you will be able to create the first, uh, first, the first map. It will be really simple, um, but then you can start Climbing up, climbing up the ladder on how complex you want to do it. Um, we will also, oh, before before I go too deep into this, if at any point you have any question, please, um, I don't know, raise your hand or you can just interrupt me, that's okay. Um, we'll explore also different projections and some of the attributes, um, how to create a new map, um, how to create a scientific map, like showing some variables, uh, for example, temperature, um, or others, um, 
And I guess the main goal is to try to understand the basics of Cardopy so you can later on implement it. And then at the end, I will, um, we'll create like our own projection, which clearly is not, um, it, ho hopefully you, will, you won't need to create your own projection uh, at any point, but it shows like how, how far can you go into the process of plotting things. Um, and then after that, I will talk a bit of more briefly about GeoPandas um, and how to manipulate some, some data formats, so geo, GeoJSONs and shapefiles. And then at the end, um, I will create a really simple animation that will, you will be able to visualize within the, uh, within the notebook. Um, so, so I will, I will keep separated CatoPy and GeoPandas at the beginning, but then uh, by the end, I will actually be using both of them, but then I will let you know when that happens. Um, so we'll start by creating our first map. Um, and in this case, this particular cell, as probably you already know, it's importing all the libraries. Um, so this, this first line, it imports the coordinate reference system. Um, so that's what CRC uh, stands for. Uh, this second line, um, and actually I'll write it here, um, imports features, uh, and this will become clearer, um, uh, but these features are basically land, ocean, um, or for example, rivers or divisions between countries, etc. cetera. Um, and then these ones are just, um, I don't know, like to plotting, uh, Plotting libraries and NumPy um, that probably you have already seen. Um, and then to plot the first uh, first map, I guess, um, is this really simple cell. Um, so in this first case, we are creating a figure, a new figure. Um, then we're telling it which projection we want. Um, in this case, just basically plotting it in a, in a plane. Um, and then we can add the cost line. So in this case, um, that's what I'm, that's what we're showing here. And usually, the way cattle pie works uh, is that the center is the zero longitude. Um, so that's that's the case for this map. Um, but of course, um, we don't necessarily only want to plot the cost lines. Um, so in this case, we can um, basically do the same thing, but just add this uh, line there. And now what we're doing is we're using um, a stock image to, to plot behind um, the projection. And for example, um, let's see if I remember, oh, I haven't been running the cells. Uh, so for example, here um, I had this previous projection which is um, play carry. But I can also change it to orthographic, for example. Um, and then that will automatically change it to this new projection. Um, and there's, there's several projections that might be of interest. Um, and then you can basically, or at least this, this is what I do all the time. Um, I, you can just basically Google car to pipe projections and then you will find um, this website in which you will find all the list um, of projections that you can use. Um, so I don't know, I can, I can go into a few of them, but the main idea is that uh, when you start playing with this website, with, with this notebook, you can um, go into this website and basically start playing with different projections um, and do the ones, I mean, use the one that you that helps you to show the data that you want. Um, and I guess that's what I'm, that's what it leads to this point and uh, that Cattopi has different projections and we can plot um, any of them. Um, and particularly Paige mentioned that, that some of you were interested in UTM. So I added a bit uh, on that in the tutorial. So for example, now, instead of using um, orthographic, uh, we will use the Robinson projection. Um, and as you can see, it's like only four lines of code um, to create this map. Uh, it will eventually become more complicated as we want to modify more things within the map. Uh, so this is the Robinson projection. Uh, 
but then we can also play around uh, with other projections. Do you have, I don't know, uh, do you have any other projections that you might be wanting to, to look at? Um, or should I just keep going? What's the, what's the vibe? Um, somebody um, just asked the question in the chat. Oh, there's a question in the chat, sorry. I, I should have opened the chat. Uh, let's give me a second. Thank you for that. Um, uh, no, the orthographic projection is not always fixed on Africa. So in this case, um, I just plotted, as I, as, I, as I mentioned, usually the center of the projections will be uh, the longitude zero. Um, and a big, a big portion of Africa happens to be around that latitude, uh, uh, that, around that longitude, but we can also, um, and I always forget about this, um, we can also change this parameter, which is called synch uh, synchron longitude. Um, so for example, I say synchron longitude minus um, 90, whoop, not crying, minus 90. Um, this will basically show us um, America. Um, or if I change it to 90, um, I guess it will show somewhere in India, uh, yeah. Um, so basically this parameter um, is the one that lets you vary um, in which longitude you're using. Um, but you can also change, in particularly orthographic coordinates, uh, in the orthographic projection, you can also change the central latitude. So that's why it's useful to come into this documentation because um, then you can actually see all the parameters that you can use. Um, so for example, I can change to um, synchron latitude to be actually minus 90 degrees. Um, and then that will, uh, that will show, oh, I'm missed, uh, equal. And that will show us Antarctica, uh, for example. Um, or we can do 30 degrees uh, latitude, um, 90 degrees longitude. And then we basically move a bit the camera um, to focus a bit more in um, Asia. Um, so, so yeah, these parameters allows you to, to vary this. And actually at the end, uh, when I'm talking about the animation, um, you will see that what I'm varying um, is actually these, these parameters um, to create an animation of the globe. Um, is there any other questions so far? Yes, um, if we want to um, plot the map of a particular place within, let's say within Europe or Asia, how do we go about that? If you want like a close, uh, um, a smaller region, that's what you mean? Yes, I see we, uh, we're, we're plotting the coastal lines now. I'm talking about like a particular region. Within a, within a state or a country. Yeah, um, we'll get to that. Actually, that I think that that's, that's where I will go later. Yeah. Uh, so I will, yeah, so that's actually a really good question. Um, so, I mean, here I left a, a few cells so you can play um, around. Uh, but then uh, these, these are the things that I don't, I'm not going to explain too much, but if you're interested in knowing how like you can code classes or different functions in Python, uh, you can let me know and I can give some sources. Um, so we'll take this at, at least right now as a black box. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I now just wanna focus on Africa. Um, so if you see here, um, and that's actually probably something important, um, I'm using the UTM. Um, so if you look at this image, it looks a bit strange. Um, and that's basically because UTMs, as probably some of you might know, uh, it's only valid within a certain longitude range, um, which is usually plus minus uh, three degrees from the central coordinate. So in this case, pretty much all East Africa, it's completely formed um, due to the projection. So there's ways that we can fix that, um, but I guess to go into, um, for example, plotting a particular region, uh, we will just focus on the band that is actually correct. Um, so in order to do that, um, there's several things that you can do. Uh, so for example, if I comment that line um, and I just execute this cell, uh, you will see that 
um, Catopi will give us a thin scribe um, of the longitude within where UTM 30 is valid. Um, this is taking a while. Mm, I guess we'll wait a bit. Um, and then we can use, I guess, this comment that I just uh, commented. I mean, this line that I commented uh, allows you to vary like the extent of the map. Um, it looks a bit complicated, um, but then I will show you how can you do um, different things to, to make it easier. Um, so here's what I was saying. Um, so if I comment this line, we now basically have this really long scribe. Uh, if I zoom in, possibly um, you can see that this uh, is um, uh, Western Europe, and then this is a bit of Africa, and then that's the UK. Um, and if I uncomment this line now, uh, uh, if I uncomment this line and I execute it now, you will see that now it's focusing on a much smaller region. Um, and it is a bit surprising that it takes so long. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I guess, um, I guess I, perhaps I should explain this one. Um, so we've seen what these lines do. Um, these two lines, um, what they do is this one will get this, this line here that I'm highlighting uh, will give you um, the extent of the, of the map. Um, so it will basically give you the coordinates of the corners of the map that you're showing. Uh, Uh, yeah, we, we will go, I mean, uh, Animo, um, ask if we can put the longitudes and latitudes on the map. Um, and yeah, I will, I will do that in, in a bit. Um, so, but I, I mean, I guess, I guess before I go there, I will, I will talk about these features. Um, so this, this, these new, these are new lines now. Um, and basically what they do um, is that it will add the borders, for example, this one will add the borders of countries. Um, this one will add um, the land, so the continents, they will, it, will, um, it will highlight it in a color and as well as the oceans. And then we can have rivers and lakes as well. Um, and once this line on the top here runs, um, Um, so, I guess going back, these 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 are the coordinates uh, of the previous map, um, and then if I if I run this one with the if I if I run this new cell with the features, uh, basically um, you will see now I actually zoom closer, so I change the extent, um, and I zoom closer to Ghana. Uh, but I also added all these features. So in this case, I have the ocean in blue, um, the continent in this uh, beige color, and uh, as and I also added the the rivers and the um, land borders. Um, so for example, you can uncomment one of these. So I, I just uncomment the borders, and then that will remove um, the um, borders between countries. Or I can remove the ocean, and then it will be uh, white, uh, or you can pretty much remove any of these ones and it will change or it will remove one or other features. Um, and I guess so far we have been using the set extent, which is a pretty, I don't know, long and not really easy to understand line. Um, you can definitely change any of these numbers and then you will see that the extent will vary. So if I change that to, to 6 million, I guess you probably can see that extend a bit more to the, to the West. Um, yeah, um, but there's, I guess, uh, sometimes um, 
better ways to just keep using um, the same code. So for example, in this case, I created this function or this class, in fact, that is uh, Ghana UTM. So what it does, it will center in Ghana and then it will give some space um, that surrounds Ghana. Um, and we basically can do exactly the same thing. And you will see that now in this case, I've zoomed in more into um, Ghana. And we can change in this particular function that I've, I've given you, uh, you can change how much you want to zoom in or zoom out um, in Ghana. Um, but I guess I will keep it in five to the, uh, um, yeah, five to the five, um, five, e to the five. Um, and, uh, let me see where will I add grid still a bit until I add grid, but I will show you when I get, when I get there. Um, so as far as I know, um, like, I guess before I move into actually reading data and displaying the data, is there any other question other than how to add longitude and latitude, uh, on the map? Does anyone else has any question? Um, or is it clear so far? Yeah. It's clear? I think it's good. Okay, cool. Um, so probably some of you have um, already started using X-Array or at least um, introduced to X-Array by page. Um, so what I'm doing here is just loading some data. Uh, this is gridded data. Um, and if I plot it, um, so this is plotting in a normal way. So just doing P, PLT, P color, P color mesh, uh, passing the longitude, the latitude, the data, and then the, the color map that we want. And then in this case, um, this is the, I guess, plot that we, we get. And you can probably figure out a bit of the continents, but it in reality doesn't look, it doesn't look that great. Um, so I guess, we want to use Cartopy to actually give uh, present a much better map. Um, so a way of doing it is that we can basically use the same thing that we were using before. So basically I create a new axis and I think I didn't explain this, um, create a new axis and then define which one is the projection that we'll be using within that plot. Um, and then basically plotting the map again and then giving it some transform coordinates to compute the corresponding coordinates within the map. And then if we if we plot that, uh, you will see that this automatically um, fixes a bit the map. It, it, it does look better. Uh, and in this case, by how the data was constructed, we don't have none values within the continent. So then we have these weird looking stripes. Um, so a way to do that is by, as, as I, described before, it was by using these features. Um, so we can basically do the same same line as above. Um, and instead of drawing the drawing the cost lines, um, we can now add the feature, which is which is the land. Um, and that's that's what we that's what we get now. So now instead of looking at these weird looking stripes, we can actually see the uh, continents colored in these, um, I don't know, we're looking green beige perhaps. Um, but obviously in this particular case, the um, continental feature, and this is uh, something important, um, it does look pretty much to the lower temperatures in the, in the poles. Um, so we want to customize a bit so we can actually highlight uh, what do we want to show. Um, uh, what, what bit would you like me to go over uh, about the particular map or? Um, how says? Um, yeah, the, the map. So how, how, to, how to get to this point? Yeah, the, the one before this. The one before this, uh, okay. Um, yes, thank so you. So in this particular, okay, so, so I'll try to break it down a bit more. Um, 
So in this particular, we're creating a figure and then we add we are adding um, a new figure axis. And then within that, the, within that um, new axis, uh, we are basically defining which one is a projection we want to use. Um, so here, I, here again, I can change it to orthographic, for example. Um, and that changed the, the projection. Um, I can change it to play carry, for example, as well. And then it will be just a flat map, or I can go back to Robinson. And then we'll go back to what we had. And here, what I'm, I'm doing is basically uh, plotting um, the data as you would plot any two-dimensional data. Um, so that will be usually up to there. Um, so in this case, you see that it does something really strange because it doesn't know what to do. Um, but if I add this line, which is the transform, um, this transform, I mean, okay, so basically this transform what will do is it will, it will modify the longitude and latitude so you can uh, plot it within the same coordinate system uh, or within the same projection. Um, so if I uncommented this projection, so if I uncommented this, is there a question? Um, yeah. Uh, so, so if you, if you, um, so if you, if you um, oh, I think I'm hearing echo. Um, anyway, so, so if you add this uh, transform, then now you, we can run it and you will see that the, um, the map will be as expected. So it will actually show the map and we will have the, uh, we'll have the right projection with the coastlines. Um, we'll have the, and the coastlines are defined by these axe.coastline. So if I could, and comment that and we'll have the map but without the coastlines. Um, and we can also change the color map. Um, we can also change the and then map. in that case we get to what we had. We had the uh, map where we have the coastlines. Um, and yeah and then now we now basically in the next next cell what we do is to change next cell, add a background to, color to the continent. Um, uh, is it, excuse me, is it possible for you to mute uh, those guys? Somebody has not muted, so they are causing some feedback. Where is it? Okay. There's your one day Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got them. Um, okay. Great. Cool. Thanks. Um, so, um, yeah. So, so in this next cell, uh, what I'm doing, what, yeah, what we're doing is to um, to add this feature, um, which is the land um, that allow us to cover uh, that missing data. Um, so if I uncomment that, see if, so if I comment that line, we get back to what we had. So where we don't have comp neither, uh, where we didn't have the coastline drawn. Uh, but if I add that line, then we get the continents. Um, and what I was saying is that. In this particular case, uh, the continents kind of merge with the lower values. Um, I mean, we can, for example, add the add the color bar to this map, um, and then as you can see here, the the because uh, this is um, mean temperature of the ocean. Um, you can see that the the poles um, are cold, um, and then that's where this uh, map. The, 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 the continents kind of merge with the map. Um, and this is not necessarily ideal. So um, we'll, we'll start, I guess now is where we'll start modifying this map so we can actually get uh, more out of it and actually use it um, um, for, I don't know, communication of science or for publications or for presentations, for example, or whatever you, you want to do. Um, Something that I haven't uh, mentioned uh, before um, is that these add feature C feature land, they're usually really low resolution. Um, so they come by default um, loaded within the uh, Cartopie um, library, but they have a resolution of um, 
I don't remember exactly the resolution, but it's really low. Um, so what we will do in this next cell is to actually download all the um, features from the natural air feature um, data set. So you can go into this website. Uh, you can go into this website and here you can see um, the highest resolution um, air data uh, available. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So we're basically downloading countries, land, um, apparently land, oh, land, land in 50 meters resolution and land in 10 meters resolution, as well as the oceans. Um, so this won't show anything, but basically it's downloading this data. Um, if you do it in your computer for the first time, you will, um, it will actually print something that is downloading. Uh, in my case, because I already downloaded, it doesn't show anything. Um, and then now we can actually add those features. So it's the same procedure. Um, so I will just go back here, up here, just to copy this line. So it's the same procedure as before. So if you see these two com commands are basically the same, except for this first input. Um, in this case, the first input that we're giving is the new data that we have downloaded. Um, and then if I do that, um, you won't see probably, a, oh, I changed it to orthographic, uh, but there's no real visible change here until we actually zoom into the data um, or into our region. Um, and then I guess this is a bit of a, a slight perk of using X-ray if you're using gridded data. Um, and so that's where we, I'm gonna move next. Um, so X-ray natively is supposed to be um, to plot um, directly into Cartopy. Um, so in this case, if you if you notice the previous cell was probably five lines, uh, six lines, um, but we can condense, and it, it's where it perhaps start becoming a bit a bit trickier. We can condense um, all of that into this line, um, into this line of. Uh, X-ray. Um, so I will just run that. Um, and we basically get the same. Now I change to a different location in the world um, to show uh, North America. And basically we can play with a lot of these parameters. So I can also change it to be, uh, I don't know, a English rain. So you can, you can pretty much play with any of these parameters um, and you will get something different. So for example, if I play, if I change this face color to orange, this will be horrible. Um, basically what I'm doing, oh, perhaps I, hmm, that's interesting. Um, okay, no, sorry, perhaps here's where I wanna change it. Um, so if you go, if we go back to this land, if I change, for example, this face color to orange, um, not recommended, um, and then I execute the cell. Oh, oh, I'm using the 50 meters. So if I change that again, sorry, to orange, uh, and then I execute the cell, you will see that now the continents are orange. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't really look great. I and mean, it obviously merges with this color bar that I picked. Um, but I will go back to gray because um, it, is, it is usually a more pleasing looking color uh, for maps, I guess. Um, anyway, so, so I will keep um, doing other things. Uh, and who, who is unmuted? Uh, I guess I'll, oh, sorry. Manuel Igwe. Yeah, I will mute. Uh, okay. Um, so now basically what I'm doing here is different um, iterations of that. Um, and here's perhaps where I recommend you to play because then here you can change, uh, for example, the projection. Or in this particular case, I changed uh, the color bar, so how, so now I just want it to go from minus five to th 30 degrees um, temperature. Um, but you can start playing with pretty much any of these values. Um, and then you will see that something changes, something might crash. So 
for example, if you let me let me show you if you if you change something. So for example, if if I change here to Robinson, um, you probably will get an er error, and then you can just go back to what you had, um, and then you will you will actually play and learn um, what what's yeah what can you change and why you cannot change. Um, I guess my my strongest recommendation is just play break things, and if they if they break too much, then go back to um, the original example. Um, and oh, I don't remember what exactly was I doing here. Um, oh, so so in this case, um, um, okay, th this has to do a bit with the data. Um, so if we look at the data, uh, so these mean SST data that we have provided, um, and if you look, if you look at the longitude, so this is the coordinate of the longitude. Um, that's the array of this data. Uh, if you look at the longitude, it starts in zero point five and it ends in three hundred six in three hundred fifty nine point five um, degrees longitude. Um, and what I'm doing in these two cells, which might be might come handy at some point for you, is basically changing it from zero to 300 to be uh, minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. To, so centering it in um, in um, longitude zero. Um, so in this particular case, you won't see that anything is changing. Uh, but basically, what I'm doing is assigning these coordinates. And then in this in this section, I'm selecting uh, a portion of the data that pr uh, that probably if you have um, if you have seen uh, pages um, pages tutorial and X-ray, this probably will make some sense to you. Um, but I will stop there. I will keep going. Um, and then now what we can do is with this new slice data or this portion of the data set, uh, I will plot a new map. Um, and then in this particular case, I'm plotting um, the again the sea surface temperature um, for the South Atlantic um, and a bit of the Indian Ocean. And in this case, um, the way uh, the way Caropi will do is you will try to fit all the data within a box. So that's why we are getting this. We're looking shape um, boundary. Um, but then we can fix that by, for example, setting it up to global. Um, so we're forcing now to have the whole globe uh, again. Um, we can do that in several times. We can also extend it manually from 89 to uh, basically, again, cover all the globe. Um, and I forgot, I thought I had the coordinates here. Um, I guess I, I will add the, I will show you how to add the coordinates a bit later. Um, I thought it was here, but um, I didn't add them here. Um, and I guess now just to showcase how complicated you can go um, and just for, just a bit out of fun. Um, there's like these really complex uh, projections I call my helial projections. Um, I don't know if this will show, um, but basically you can create really complicated things um, in, in, yeah, with projections. Um, and the one that we're gonna try, if I remember properly, might be this one. So we're gonna try to reproduce uh, this projection, which is a cylindrical uh, my hero projection. Um, and if you want me, I can stop. I, I can I can explain each step, but I, I will encourage you more to actually look into the code and see if you can figure out um, what what exactly is happening. So it's more like a challenge. Um, but if we if we run these these cells, um, you will see that each time I'm getting closer to to what it might look one of these chunks of the map. Um, and then, for example, here now I got one, one, only one chunk of these. Uh, and then I can code some functions to do it for me every single time. And then I can run this cell 
and this cell will give me something similar to this map that I just showed you, just with less uh, with less um, gores. Um, and that gores are defined, the number of gores are defined by that, those two lines. Um, in the meantime, while, while I wait for this, um, is there any other question? And I will go back to the how to add the longitude and latitude in maps. Um, but is there any other question? Um, um, so, for example, now we have this um, this new this new projection in which we have basically slices uh, of the ocean. Oh, sorry, of the of the globe. Um, do you have any any question? Okay, I guess I guess there's no. Okay. Um, um oh. what about um sorry? Hmm? What about adding of um titles? Is it the same thing as using the oh. um, plots? Yeah, that's that's actually a great question. Um yeah, so you can all you can I will go up. Um so so for example, here you can add um you can add titles as you will do normally. So titles uh and I don't know, SSD. Um, so that will add the title. Um, I don't know, there's, there's more things that we can probably edit, um, but I, I, I guess, let, let me show you in the next couple. Once I add, once I add longitude and latitude, we can actually play a bit more on how to change more of these things. Uh, but yeah, pretty much is the same. Um, I mean, it's actually the same uh, way that you will do it with a normal plot. Um, uh, there's a few a few caveats in to change then the exact coordinates that you might want to show in a map. Um, but uh, I will also talk about these things um, in a bit. So now we will move into GeoPandas. Um, so as I said, GeoPandas is this uh, library that grabs pandas and lets you do um, maps of that data um, in a kind of easy to use way. Um, so there's some there's some data here that I can, that I found about um, maps particularly. So uh, so information in geospatial information um, that can be used in Japan is particularly for uh, geojson data. Um, so here, what I'm showing is I'm, I'm loading um, the electrical system um, of uh, I forgot the I forgot the acronym um, renewable renewable electrical system of uh, Ghana. Um, so that's what this um, file has. I'm providing it a coordinate reference system, and then. Um, and, and then I'm just displaying the head of that data. Um, so as you can see here, this is actually pretty similar as if it will be with, um, as it will be with just loading some pandas um, data set. Oh. Oh, sorry, Arias. Um, and Basically, the same same structure, and you can see that it's really similar to pandas. Um, but similar as with pandas, we, we can just play around uh, with with this data. Uh, and actually, I encourage you to to play with it. Um, we can, for example, yeah, it, it has been recorded, so it will be available. Um, uh, so basically, we can put a histogram of when was this electrical system built. Um, so if we plot that, uh, for example, we can see that pretty much all the electrical system was uh, built in the 2000, well, in a bin between the 2000 and 2002. And then there's a bit more um, construction of the system um, later on. And there's, I guess, some expected to be built. Um, we can also, for example, uh, look at the voltage. Uh, in kilovolts, and this basically tells like which lines have a higher voltage than others. Um, is there What's any on? question? 
I want to change the color of beans because it's always blue. I'm looking in red, green. Oh, so, sorry, can you repeat that? Can you change the color of the beans because it's always blue? Oh, change the color of the beans. Uh, yeah. Um, that's actually, I'm a bit on the spot. I don't remember. Um, is how can I do this? Uh, so perhaps, perhaps actually something that might be helpful. Um, how was this? How can I do this? Um, oh, I've forgotten. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I forgot the um, command. So as you can see, this is pretty much the process I will normally use either way. Um, so I will just Google it. And um, in this case, I'm sure there will be somewhere here where it says the color. Uh, so it tells, it says that the histogram of matplotlib um and then i'm sure it's just color um okay um so color equals red so yeah so that changes the color and you can use i don't know um blue uh you can also give certain um cells i mean different columns different he, different beans, different colors. Um, and that, um, that is a bit trickier. Um, um, I'm not gonna try because I think I, I'm not gonna be able to make it, but uh, basically this, this is um, something that Pandas does. It's not necessarily GeoPandas. So if you go to the documentation of Pandas, you can actually see how, how to do um, these changes in which we can change the, the colors of each one of them. Uh, and we actually, in the case of maps, uh, I will show you how to, how to do, how to change certain segments to different colors. Um, but I cannot remember right now um, for this particular thing, which is basically pandas. Um, anyway, so, so I guess now we will go into Catapy pandas, um, which basically is your pandas. Um, and in this case, all this first bit is pretty much what we've been, what we've seen before. Um, and all this thing down here is new. Um, so just to, to note that, new code below. Um, so in this, in so the way it works, and this is a, mandatory line, um, what I'm doing here is to change the projection of the data set to that of my given projection. Um, in this case is the Ghana UTM, this function that I, I gave you before. Um, and then here I'm plotting, I'm plotting the lines, I'm plotting the data. And then these, these ones we will see, I will comment all of these ones and then we'll see what they do, each one of them. Um, so I will execute that. And then as you can see, now we have, so what did we plot? So we plotted, um, we added all the features of so border, land, ocean, rivers, and lakes, the coastlines, and then we plotted this data. Um, so if we look at this map, then we have the ocean in blue, then the continent, um, the continent, the borders um, of the countries. And then we have the data, which are all these um, green lines which correspond to this uh, renewable energy electric system. Um, if we, for example, if I uncomment that, and perhaps this is going towards um, towards what, um, I forgot, who was it? Um, Animo uh, asked, um, is how to add this uh, longitude and latitude within a map. Um, 
Yeah, you can use directly UTM data. You can use any coordinate system um, as far as you, I mean, you have to be careful enough that you, you convert it to the right uh, coordinate system. Um, but other than that, you can use pretty much any of the ones that you have, like any of the ones that Cartopy supports, uh, which are pretty much all the common ones. Um, I haven't found any situation in which none of them fit uh, what I need. Um, and definitely UTM is one of them. Yeah, uh, WGS84, yeah, as well. Um, so in that particular case, if you if you have a particular need, like I will encourage you to go into the Cartopie documentation, because um, yeah, it pretty much allows you to do any any of, of these things. And then once you define this projection, uh, which is a Cartopie projection, you can convert any of the data um, into that newer um, coordinate system projection. Um, so, so I guess there's these grid lines has a lot of um, a lot of arguments. Um, so the first one, which you will see pretty much in all in all the um, in all the functions, not the one that you will plot, uh, you will usually use this plot carry uh, projection. Um, and I won't I won't go too much too deep in that, but basic basically, if you're not plotting data, you want to use plot carry, um, and then you can define these draw labels. So that's the one that will draw these um, the la longitude and latitude on the map, and I can, for example, do false, and that will turn them off. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm back. You got you. Um, or I can turn them true and then they basically will show again. And then we have these other parameters which are basically like aesthetics of the map. Um, so for example, in this case, the line, line width of the grid lines. So if I change it to five, you will see that these grid lines will be huge. Um, I can change the color of the grid of the, of the grid lines uh, to be red, for example. Um, so that changes that color of these grids. Um, I can change the the alpha color of the mm -hmm. lines. Is there any question? Um, okay. I think it's Urias also. Yeah. He has to um, unmute, I mean, yeah. mute himself. I, I think he, he just unmuted. Okay, cool. Um, you can you can change the alpha or you can also change the line style. So in this case, I have dash lines, but you can do um, oh, clearly not dots, uh, but you can do dash dotted lines. Um, so it's not really obvious, but that those lines are oh, perhaps if I change it to five, it might be more obvious. So that's dash dotted lines, um, or you can have a solid line. Um, um, but we'll go back to what we had. Um, and then, for example, in this case, we have way too many, or perhaps not necessarily way too many, but we have, a, perhaps we don't want to show that many um, long latitude and longitudes on the map. So we can change them by using this GL, so grid lines X locator and grid line Y locator. So that's the grid line uh, in the location in the Y and the location in the X axis. Oh, yeah. Um, so we can change it to pretty much be anything we want. Um, so I will we'll comment that. And then like, for example, it has to be a list or an array. Um, and then we can, for example, change the X, the location in X to be four, one, 1.5 and, oh, sorry, this has to be, these ones have to be negative. It does work with shape files. Um, I don't know, I doubt it will work with proprietary uh, files of ARGIS, but shape files are 
supported. Um, actually, I will I will show that in a bit. Um, um, so then I can do some other I don't know random numbers, and then basically uh, those are the ones it's showing. So in this case, it's showing four. Uh, minus 1.5, which is not labeling because it's too close to the other label. Um, and then one, and also we can also add, I don't know, we can change it to be now three. Um, oh, in this case, three is too far away. Um, so we can pretty much give any coordinates we want. But I, I guess I will. I usually like to have something regular, um, so I'm just using this NumPy range um, function, um, and then we can, for example, um, define if we only want to see certain sizes of the plot with um, a coordinate. So if I say top labels false, then that will get rid of these top labels. Um, if I say left labels, it will get rid of the left labels. Um, and then, so that's what it's happening here. And then if you want to get rid of all of them, you can, again, tell them all to be false. Um, um, and then like, for example, now that something that might be more interesting because um, displaying these lines all in green, it's useful to know where the electrical system is, but it doesn't really tell us much about it. Um, so we can, for example, now plot, and pretty much all the code here is different, except for adding a color bar and adding this, this line here. Uh, I mean, that add, adding this um, column um, variable here, or column argument here. So if I execute this cell, you will see that now, the lines are not all green. They are in fact colored by um, the voltage that each one of them carries. Um, so, um, and if you look at this, I also added this. So I added this, I guess, I guess the new things, uh, and I will, I will just group them to make it easy. Um, so the new things in this command, are these three lines here. Um, this one basically tells uh, the plotting function to color um, the lines or the features um, of the map within a given value. Uh, in this case, the value of the voltage. Oh, good morning. Yeah, well done. Yeah. I thank God. Well done. Oh, yeah. over time. Um, so uh, do you do you want to? I mean, I didn't notice that it was over time. So do you want to keep going, or do you want to go? I don't know. Oh, I think you should finish the tutorial. I should finish. Okay, I will. I will try to keep going quicker. Um, so basically, this adds the color bar, and then this adds a label um, into the into this color map. And then basically now from here on, I'm playing a bit uh, with it. So instead of sh showing a color map, I'm showing classes. So in this case is again, the voltage. And in this case, the, the, these are the new things. Um, uh, voltage uh, within categories. Um, and if you, if you, I mean, the, this might happen if you are playing with these, um, with these cells, but if you get this error, that is printed here, you might need to run this cell, but that's, it's, it's instructed there what you might need to do. Um, and then we can keep playing in this case, coloring with years. So then we can see when, when were they built and when will they be built um, and then use different categories. Um, or how, how long each one of these lines are, for example. Um, and then I guess something that, um, Urias was asking, um, we can also use shape files. Um, so in this case, I'm using um, also, um, um, also GeoPandas to load these shape files. Um, 
This is not really crucial, but this is a library that contains some example files. Um, so that's the, that those are the ones that we are using in the in the example. Um, and then here, for example, you can see all the again, it's a pandas looking table uh, with all the examples that, that you can play with um, and different data. In this particular case, I will uh, I, I thought that it was interesting to load this data from the poll. And basically what this is 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 health and um, socioeconomic uh, data from the poll. Uh, but if you want to know more information, you can you can always get this um, get this example, load the example, and then get uh, an URL where you can find more information. Um, so in this case, you can read what exactly is within that data set, uh, which might be helpful for you to start playing with um, and actually know what to what to do. Um, so in this case, I'm I'm finding the file of this shape file. Uh, of Nepal within the examples within this library. Um, but if you wanted to load a shape file, what you will need to do is to comment that line and then just change this. So do something like p path equals path to file. Um, so give the path to the file, uh, to the shape file that you want, um, and then just keep on going um, with, the, with the code. Um, but um, we'll uh, we'll keep going with with, with this particular shape file. Um, so now I, I printed the, the data, and in this case, uh, you will see it has a lot of variables, um, and in fact, sixty two columns. And we can see that it has a lot of things, uh, and you can play with any of these things. But in in this particular case, so here is all the names of the variables. And you can go to the documentation to see what each one of them um, means. But in this particular case, um, I will be focusing on these kids um, from, uh, I think the data is kids from one to five that are, go that are going to, oh no, from grade one to five that are going to schools um, or the percentage of kids that are going to schools. Um, so if we, if we plot that, um, we get this. I actually don't remember if, if what I just said was right in terms of the data, um, but you can definitely go and look into it. And now, now we're gonna plot it. Um, so if we plot it, um, so we can plot it in this particular case uh, being really big. So in this, um, so Nepal is there. Uh, we have added a color bar. And then we also said this title, and I guess I zoom it out uh, so we could exactly see where Nepal is. But then we can definitely zoom into the into the area and plot within this category. So in this case, uh, this map is showing um, regions where there's higher percentage of uh, of the uh, of the kids um, going to the school to school. Um, and regions where they don't have that that many kids going to school, um, and then I guess I will create like I just just to finish I will create this really simple animation. But you can do this with pretty much any map um, if you think how you want to do it. Um, and what I'm gonna do, and as as I said before, I will I, I'm picking this orthographic map. Uh, of orthographic projection. And what I'm showing here is um, basically population on uh, of countries in Africa. Um, so th that's what this query is doing from this data. Um, and then I can just make an animation by executing this code. Uh, so if I execute this code, you will see that this earth here it's kind of slow, but you will see that it's rotating. Um, and I don't know, pretty much that's the, that's the tutorial. I'm sure that there's a lot of questions. Um, so if you if you want to ask me, ask now. Hi, friend. Oh, we don't see code. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Martinez. Yep. Yeah, can we make? Is it possible to make the map interactive, whereby we can zoom in, zoom out, and you know, get some locations using points and the rest of them? Yeah. So, so you can. I guess it depends how interact interactive you want it to be. Um, so, using um, Jupyter Notebook for interacting plotting is not ideal. Um, so, if you want to have a plotting which you can zoom in or zoom out, um, it might be better for you to use it just directly in Python or using I Python. Um, or you can also. Uh, I always forget this. I forget all these things, but um, let me see if I can if I can figure it out quickly. Um, I think that you could also be able to. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, uh, Magic command uh, dynamic plot. Um, so you can also use Py uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this. Um, okay, not successful there. Um, I'm not sure, I'm, I cannot find it, but you can also make Matplotlib to create a new figure in which you can zoom in and out, but it's, it's not, I guess if you compare it to Argus, um, it's not necessarily um, it, that easy to, I don't know, move from one part of the globe to another one. I guess you need to, you kind of need to know where you're looking and where do you want to zoom. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's not probably the answer you wanted to to hear, but yeah. Um, no, it's all right. I, I understand. I, I get the point. Yeah, but yeah, definitely I will recommend you that, that there must be a, so these are called magic comments. Um, okay. And then, the, the, the issue is that I don't remember which one might be um, the comment to do so. Um, and that will pop up a figure that you can actually move and navigate um, on it. But um, I, I will I will post something later later today uh, on that if you um, want to use it. Um, all right, all right. Yep. It's fine. Um, is there any other question? So, um... In the in this um, GeoPandas, uh, where you have you have uh, data for the countries and then you plot them on the on the map, is there mm -hmm. um lat long information embedded in the data set? Yep. Oh, okay. um, so that is what helps in putting them on the map, right? Yeah. So if we, for example, in this case of Africa, the data of Africa. So if I look at the data of Africa, you will see that it has the continent. Um, it has the name name of the country, um, the ISO of the country, so like the the short um, name, the description. Oh, sorry, the um, GDP. I don't remember what is the estimate, medium estimate, or something like that. Um, the population estimate, and then the polygons. So the polygons are the ones that contain the geographical data. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can extract all. You can also extract each one of these polygons and do things with it. Um, so. right. And the ship ship files are basically like Excel, kind of. Are they like so Excel the, file? So the way Python will read it, it will be like this table. Yeah, it will convert mm -hmm. the shape file into this table looking thing. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Um, and then, I mean, you can actually export these to, I mean, if you are interested on in that, you can export these to a file. Although I'm not sure how easy or hard will it be to interpret. Uh, <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's, that's you, can, you can give a file name here. Yeah. And then that will be exported, but I don't know um, 
yeah i don't know if, if you want if you really want to go and look at all these beautiful numbers <laughs> um. <laughs> okay great thank you very much uh this way yep no worries um. And anything else, or should we should we finish it today? Any more questions? Otherwise, uh, I think you can probably end the session. I think there's another one coming up. Also. Yeah, I think I'm a normal. Not one. sure. Maybe later in the afternoon, probably. Or Ghana time. <laughs> yeah. Well. I, I guess otherwise, um, I guess you can go and if you have any other questions once you once you act, once you play with with uh, the tutorial, um, you can just text me uh, on Slack um, and yeah, I will try to respond as quickly as possible. Um, so so yeah, if there's no no more questions right now, I will wait for you when once you play and then. Yeah, uh, and I guess I will, I will post these two questions that I, I know how to do it, although I don't remember exactly right now how to do it. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for coming, and I hope um, this will be of help for you. Um, and yeah. Okay. Awesome. Great. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice awesome. to see you too. Take care. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. Ciao. Oops. Hi. Hi.